modern world seems to be constantly on the move, but there are some places where time has permanently stopped and nobody seems to care about them anymore. This happened to the former house of the family Meuse. After the last inhabitant, Mrs. Susan, passed away, there was nobody left to take care of the property and the time has stopped forever. For the better part of two decades, Mrs. Susan lived in this wonderful grand house all on her own. But there is something strange about this place. The lights still shimmer on the belongings that are left behind. In other words, the power is still working. This makes questions arise. Who is still paying for it and why? Before it got abandoned, this house used to be the home of a Luxembourgish family. They were the owners of a rather large convenience store in the center of town. They even accommodated it a deprived worker of the store to live in a special apartment inside their house. The family was well respected for it and received a lot of love from the citizens of town. Today we will try to answer the strange questions that arise around this home and solve its mysteries. Good morning everyone from the country of Luxembourg. Welcome back to the Bros of Decay. I'm Leslie and I'm going to take you on another epic adventure today. I'm in a place, a very special place, that has now been left behind since the year 2015 and it was of the family Meuse. Everything, all their belongings are still in the house. I'm gonna show you today what's left behind of their life. Let's go. Most of you probably don't know the country of Luxembourg, but it's an independent country in Europe, a very, very small one. Only about three, 400,000 people, I believe, live in this country, but it's also one of the richest countries in the world. And it's not often that you find an abandoned place in this country because land is at a premium here. But today I found a place that's gonna blow your mind. And this one was of the family Meuse. And the woman that lived here unfortunately passed away five years ago. But there was nobody to take over her home. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty sad story. Her husband was in the army and he died at a fairly young age. We believe it's around 50 years old. Uh, and now there's, yeah, she lived here the remainder of her life totally alone. I'm going to show you where she lived and what she did in life. We first off are here in the basement of the place where there are a lot of cages left behind. And I assume that these cages were used for rabbits because there's some poop left behind. And rabbits have like ball, balls of poop. <laughs> so there, she housed a lot of rabbits in this place. As you can see, there are like 15 cages. And maybe she stored multiple rabbits. Maybe she sold them even. I'm just assuming right here, so don't get me on my words. As you can see, the spider webs are already taking over this place and making it their own. And when we walk further, you walk into the garage where even her car is still left behind. The dust over the years is collecting on the windshield of the car. You can see some animals have trampled over this thing. Uh oh, I think it's even open. Yes, it is. And it looks like somebody has slept in this car because the seat is all the way back. It even has that smell, guys. Wow. That's crazy. Close it up. Luxembourg, that's the number plate of Luxembourg and the L from Luxembourg. It's actually 
It's actually a very favorite country of mine. It has some beautiful nature, like waterfalls, and in the winter it's all snowy. I love this place and I love coming here to explore because you can also see something of the country while exploring. That's great. And from here we walk into another part of the barn with very high ceilings. They are immensely tall, at least 10 to 12 meters. I think that's about 30 to 40 feet. And then you come into a part where there's a huge staircase or ladder, I should say. And over there, <laughs> yes, I'm not kidding. That's the entrance to the house for real. And there are even windows of the house here in the barn. It looks like they built the house later on. My God, as you can see, it looks like been built on over the years. There's a bicycle left behind here. Wow, the chain is all rusted up. Shopping cart, a few things left in this place. A lawnmower. <laughs> I can't imagine myself riding that down the lawn and cutting the grass with it. That must be pretty tough. I've never done that before. Only with like a powered one. Well, I'm just amazed by how the structure of this house looks. It's crazy. Okay. Let's venture up this staircase and let's risk our lives <laughs> to get into this place. It's a pretty tough ladder. There's like a huge beam missing here. So you have to go all the way around. Oh, this one is loose. Don't want to fall off this. And that's the only way to get inside of this house. Wow. And over here is the door. That's gonna lead us into the house. So let's now venture through this place and see where Mrs. Meuse spent those years without her husband alone in this place. It's actually a fairly big home for just one person. And it's going to be pretty sad as well. See this beautiful lamp over here? The strange thing about this house is that the electricity still works after all those years. It's something that we don't come across very often, especially not in the country of Luxembourg. I have one other video, just one, where the electricity still works. And that I will link up here. No, on this side. Go have a look at that one. That's four years ago, together with my brother. Okay, let's start off here to the right. Let's go room by room and see what's left behind of her life. The first thing we notice again, the electricity just pops on. And we have like a little dining area, a very cute and little dining area. A nice clock on the wall. It's not a clock, I think it's a thermometer with Fahrenheit and Celsius in there, as you can see. A nice emblem on the wall. <laughs> Pretty vintage dining area. And what I catch in the corner of my eye is this picture of the girl, presumably in the Marine or the Army. I think that's like a cross on her head. So that might be an army hat. Wow. Here is Mrs. Meuse, her sewing kit. With the mountains, the Fuji mountains in the background. The linen for the table are still here. I love these plates on the wall. They are just wonderful. Didn't, didn't like it says on there. They are from 1994. A very well-known sewing brand, sewing machine brand. Singer sewing machine. I love to see those. Especially in such great condition. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work. Yeah, the wheel still turns. As you can see, the wheel still turns. There's nothing attached to it anymore. 
And over here we have another beautiful coffee table. Still a teapot on top of there. Wonderful to see. Let's turn off the light. Next to the dining area we have another room with the window right open. This one is pretty empty. It seems like they might have taken some furniture out of the house. But who did it? I don't know. Here's a painting of Mr. Wetter from the 70s. He painted a nice landscape, presumably in Luxembourg. Wonderful to see. Nice cabinet. All the glasses still in there. Wow. Beautiful brass chandelier on the wall. Over here, there's a castle displayed. A wonderful castle. And an upholstery chair in the corner here. Amazing to see. And now we come again into the big hallway. I'm searching for the light button. Yeah, I want to show you this hallway. It's wonderful. It's actually pretty huge with a chandelier hanging here in the middle. It's like a little sitting area where you could relax. Probably nobody sat there very often. Hello, everybody. Little drawer here where she stored some appliances like lamps and maybe some medicine, some cosmetics. And there are some letters in here as well. Lots of paintings all throughout this place. Wow. What's this room here? You see. Oh, this is like a walk-in dresser. This is actually a pretty cool room. The mold is getting to this place. Over here we can see her coat hanging over here and all her purses as well. Wow. She made this whole room into a walk-in dresser. A cracked window on the floor. And over here you can see that basement from that room. Wow. It's like a newspaper left here. The price is two francs, two Luxembourgish francs. Wonderful to see. This one is from 1950, as you can see. I love her walk-in dresser. These are her bed linen to put on the beds throughout the house. We have her clothes here to the side. And I placed a bucket here that's completely filled with water right now, as you can see. But it probably leaked in. Yeah, this is pretty wet. So this house is falling apart. I love this display of all her last clothes here to the side. It's just crazy. The suitcase cases to travel around the world. Still up there collecting dust and spider webs. Wow. And even her umbrellas and the walking stick umbrella are still left here. So I'm exploring with Urbex Luca. I've explored with him like five years ago. He doesn't want to show his face in the video, so I really respect that. But I explored with him, he's right there. Five years ago, and now we are exploring together again. He's showing me this house, so thank you very much uh, for showing me this place. And you found out some history about the woman that lived here, Mrs. Meuse. Uh, what was her first name? So her first name was uh, Susan, Susan. she only got 68 years old. Wow, that's... Pretty young age to die. 68 years old, do you hear that? Mrs. Susan, deepest respect for you and I'm gonna film your house as well in the deepest respect, so uh, all my heart goes out to you. We even found some more things about Susan. We have a picture of her over here. Uh, this is like a driver's license, I think. Transport public. Oh no, this is her public transport card. 
Wow. And we are not 100% sure, but this maybe is the mother or something. It's a wonderful picture taken in Paris. Paul Derby. Back then it was not common to take pictures, so you had to go somewhere special to take these pictures. Just wonderful. So we're back in Mrs. Susan, her hallway again, and there's a wonderful piece of furniture here to the side. It's actually one of my most favorite pieces of furniture that you can find in an abandoned house. This is an accountancy desk, and an accountancy desk was used back in the day to count the bills and do all the paperwork on. So let's have a look at it. These are pieces of furniture with lots of secrets. So they have secret compartments to store money and to do all that kind of stuff. The way you open it is just turn the big key here at the top, so like that. And then it folds open. And then you have like a desk platform where you can perform your accountancy on. Unfortunately, this is a, this is a very, very basic one. It doesn't have secret compartments. I filmed more intrigue ones, but it's actually pretty nice to see one in a, just a regular house. I really like the design of it from the outside. There's even a little candle up here. And here in the hallway as well, Mrs. Susan stored some coats to go outside with. They are wonderfully stacked here in the hallway. I've not looked behind this door, so I'm pretty excited to see what's behind here. Oh my god. We encounter a stairway. Wow. And again, we can see that this part of the house has been built on afterwards. Well, the first thing we see is like a little display cabinet. Tiled display cabinet. Amazing, with a staircase. The lead is up there. To an attic. Oh my God, this attic is enormous. This house is actually enormous. Wow, here she dried all her clothes. Amazing to see. And there's like a little bedroom up here with a very, very vintage bed. Look at that mattress. No way. And this was the pillow. <laughs> it's pretty springy. Wow. A blue Portuguese cabinet. Just downstairs we saw the display cabinet with the tile and that's the Portuguese tile. And this looks like a very Portuguese cabinet because it has like these curtains in there and curtains you would normally never see in a display cabinet like this. Spider webs. And again, the whole place is totally falling apart, unfortunately. Down here is that room that uh, walk-in dresser room. And as you can see, we saw the bucket with water. And up here, it just leaks in there because the roof has totally fallen apart. Okay, let's go underneath here. A few more things stored up here. <gasps> oh my God, what's this machine? I think it's a washer. Is this a washing machine? Is I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is an, a vintage washing tub. So you put your clothes in here, you just stir it around with this handle, like this, to see if it still works. It's pretty rusted. It's pretty rusted. Damn. Wow, that's an amazing piece. Here's the chimney for the fireplace. It goes outside. I want to give you one glance down over here. <laughs> Somebody's taking a picture of the Eilidzi Rune. Rune is with me today as well. Wow, what a place. And we're not done yet. From the hallway, we can walk to this part of the house. To the right of us, there is a stairway that's presumably going to lead us into the kitchen area and other parts of the house. In front of us here, we have some dining space, some living space, and I presume I can see from the corner of my eye that her bedroom is at the end of this hallway. 
first of another painting and then we can walk straight into her bedroom wow there's no mattress left on the bed as you can see and excuse me for the noise outside because i think that i just stopped a garbage truck outside <laughs> Yeah, the garbage stuck, truck stuck, I stopped here. An upholstery chair at the end of our bedroom with two people dancing in a garden, a French garden. She had furniture from all over the world in her house. I, I should say all over Europe because these are very European antiques. A wonderful vin uh, vanity here to the side. This might have been Mrs. Susan. Deepest respect to you, Susan. Wow, her bed. Very, very religious. It's very serene walking through this place. Then we come into a dining space. I presume, yeah, the lights also still work over here. Display cabinet full of crystalline glasses, as you can see, that she only took out when family dinners happened. Wow. This might have been her husband. She proudly displayed them over here. We really love this place. Oh, this is a nice coffee table. Looks like all the brands of beer or something like that are on here. No way. And then over here she had like a sitting area with a marble table in the middle and these upholstery chairs and sofa to the side. Wonderful. I really like these type of sofas. They are lovely. A forest. Yes, this is Susan. Hi, Susan. As you can see, a beautiful face. My well, light is a little bit in the way, but you can see her when she was ready to get married to her beloved husband. Wow. All our dishes are still in here. Wonderful. Coffee table, marble coffee table. Oh, and here she's together with her husband that we also just saw in the picture when they were ready to get married. Amazing two rooms over here, amazing. I just noticed something. I showed you this picture of Susan, but in the background there's this little drawer with the candles on top of there. And I was looking around the house and if you walk back here, this drawer in the hallway is exactly the same drawer that's in the picture with Susan. That's just crazy. She took the pictures, presumably inside of this house. <sighs> that's just one little quirk again of exploring abandoned places and you really totally have to investigate to find these things. But I love it. I love to see that. So this stairway over here looks very, very creepy. Let's, let's venture down there. Okay. First of all, there's some storage up here. Oh, some sprays, bug sprays. Here's the electricity meter. There's no lights on right now, so it's not running. This one has nothing. Let's close that up. Let's go further. It's gonna take us into another part of the house. Which I assume was built first. And we have the telephone. 
Siemens telephone. Landline telephone. Don't want to destroy any, anything inside of this place. Wow, here we come to the front door of the place. You can hear the garbage truck again. But these rooms unfortunately seem empty. Maybe she didn't use this part of the house anymore at the latter part of her life. Because why would they leave those beautiful furnishings upstairs in the house and leave this deserted and untouched later on? Wow, it says over here, January 2015. There are even some last appointments on her calendar. VCT, wow, here on the 23rd of February 2015, Mrs. Susan had a visit to get her nails done. Crazy stuff. This one's empty as well. Over here the kitchen is. This one seems to have been used at the latter part of their life. There's even some last food left in, the, left in this wall cabinet. Some last pots and pans that she used. It's a nice little boiler or stove. Spice rack. Wow. What I want to test out is maybe if the water also still runs. And yes, everybody, the water in this place does also still run. Amazing. I even see a stairway up here. Wait, there's one more room. Oh, this is the bathroom. Okay, we didn't see the bathroom yet. This was Mrs. Susan, her bathroom. Will it be there? A toilet, a shower, and a bathtub. Let's look up this windy staircase at the top floor. Oh, this also seems to be very, very empty. But I'm wondering why on earth did they build on that other part of the house if they had such a big place that's unoccupied? That's just crazy to me. All these rooms have no function anymore. And these doorways, oh my God, they are literally so small that I can't even walk underneath them. <laughs> Very tiny rooms in this place. Very lovely to see. I, I, I just adore this staircase that's built into this place. And that leads us up to the last part of the house, which is the second attic. There's even a bed, bed up here, but not that much. A children's stroller to the end of it. And a few more things. Wow. Look over here. A melon, a melon. Another painting of somebody. Just what a wonderful and unique place. I just adore it, really. I just adore it. Thank you, Mrs. Susan. What a wonderful place that we just explore. Everything left behind of the life of Mrs. Susan. I really want to thank her again, like I did multiple times in this video, but wow. Must be, must take a lot of courage to live in this place for such a long time alone. And I really feel for her. I was, I'm very grateful that I could explore this place and very thankful for you all to join me on this adventure. If you liked it, please like the video, write a nice comment down there, subscribe to the channel to see a new exploration every single week. And in the description, there's also a link to Patreon. They can help us out, explore around the world and bring these amazing places to you all. 
Guys, I love you very much, and I'll see you next week. Another epic adventure. Bye-bye.